Hey, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. And the Wednesday before Palm Sunday. We're almost into that season. Hey, this evening, if you want to share this on your page, that would be great. It'll get us uh, started, get us going here, and allow others to uh, be a part of Bible study this evening. And that's what we're really hoping for, to get uh, others to hear about uh, God's faithful love. That's what we're going to talk about tonight, um, God's faithful love. If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in Hosea. So I'll get you started turning there. Go to Psalms. Go to your right. Uh, several pages in. Uh, Hosea is one of the uh, prophets. It's really about the same time as Isaiah. Uh, he's one of the uh, minor ones there. So if you'll get that started, get that going, that would be uh, great. Allow others to take part in the ministry this evening and take part in our Bible study. Uh, just really see where we're at, what we're doing we're in the Gospel Foundations. We're in volume, let's see, volume four, session one tonight. Uh, so we're beginning a new, a new book. Uh, you don't have to have a book to do the Bible study, but it's great. It has some added things that uh, we don't always get to on Wednesday night. So I encourage you to, uh, if you don't have one, to go ahead and pick one up at the church. If you need one mailed to you, let us know. Books are free. Uh, it's great insight, great foundational things to. Uh, help you in your walk with the Lord, uh, so I really encourage you to uh, get one and, and get uh, started with it. Um, again, this evening we have a few announcements, and then we're going to um, take for time for some prayer, and then we're going to get started on the Bible study, God's Faithful Love. Uh, let's see, announcements tonight, we have the Pomona Food Pantry tomorrow for West Franklin School Districts. Uh, they're at the Lighthouse from 1 to 4. Uh, we do have a delivery for those that uh, help. Uh, as, as normal on Thursdays, I will message you guys and let you know um, what time the truck will be there so you can come help um, at that point because we don't just sit around out there. So uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's tomorrow, uh, which is exciting. Sunday is Palm Sunday, uh, so that's always a good chance to shout to the Lord and... Uh, be excited for what he's doing. Uh, so that's what we're going to come looking forward to on, on Sunday. Um, normal times this week. Uh, uh, normal in-person time is 10.30. Uh, we show the video that goes along with the Bible study that we cannot show on uh, Facebook, on social media. And then we start at 10.35 uh, on Facebook Live. So uh, invite your friends to join you Sunday. It's Palm Sunday, a great day to uh, fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ, a great day to celebrate what Jesus has done for each one of us. Uh, so it's an exciting time. Then the following week uh, on uh, Resurrection Sunday, uh, it's going to be a little bit different for us in person at North. Uh, from 10 to 10.20, we're going to have uh, donuts, coffee, juice uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, we invite you to come and fellowship before the service. Uh, service will begin at 10.30 again with the video and then 10.35 uh, on, uh, on Facebook Live. Then next Tuesday we'll have uh, the North Baptist Church Food Pantry. They're at North at uh, uh, 1 to 4. And that's really for the Northside Ottawa residents and then um, Lincoln School District families. And so we try to uh, keep uh, account of that as well. Um... Also, starting Sunday, uh, we're going to start showing, I mentioned last Sunday, we're going to start showing a little video clip. It'll be on our webpage, on the audio sermon page, but it'll be a video this week. Uh, it'll be at 7 o'clock each night. Uh, there'll be a short video clip there, so we'll work through it on uh, Wednesday night uh, with the Bible study. But uh, there'll be a short video. Uh, I really encourage you to take your friends and family uh, to that page and to uh, start to uh, um, get a chance of setting it up. We're going to set it up uh, Friday, have it available for Sunday. Uh, you can go on there and kind of look at it. Uh, Web page is uh, ottawanbc.org. So if you want to go on there, take a look at that, see what the web page is, uh, get started with that. And yeah, as I speak on the here, there's no spaces between Ottawa and NBC, so ottawanbc.org. Uh, so anyway, check out the webpage. Uh, the video will be on there. Uh, we're going to do a, a short 
uh, Bible study each evening on it. Uh, I'm excited about the, the possibilities for this, for this new week, and and just seeing what uh, is happening with that. So, hey, exciting things are, are happening. Uh, it's really good to be a part of what the Lord is doing. Uh, I'm excited about that. I'm excited for you to be here this evening. Uh, I think that's really our announcements. Um, prayer this evening. Uh, for those of you at North, uh, Keith is uh, headed home from the hospital. Uh, so he's doing somewhat better. He's got a modified diet and... and uh, had some um, rest and relaxation along the way uh, through this, and so continue to uh, pray for recovery for him. Uh, Destiny is still in the hospital, so we want to pray for uh, recovery for Destiny and and just uh, God to really uh, work in a mighty way uh, from uh, our prayers in and through and through her. So also be with uh, uh, Cameron as well while Destiny's in the hospital. Uh, we, had, we had a prayer concern several weeks ago. We're going to continue to pray for uh, John Duty, uh, which is Julie's husband. She was on a few weeks ago, and then again last week, her husband has uh, esophagus cancer, and so we want to lift up John for that. Uh, I want to continue to pray for uh, Jessica from West Virginia, uh, praying for her foot. It looks like it's headed in the right direction for recovery now, but uh, don't stop praying for her. Really keep those up. and. Uh, just help her to see God move in the midst of, of what's going on there. Um, let's see. Uh, pray for the Bunch family. Uh, Carol Lee has an unspoken. Continue to pray for Emily and, and her health. And, and just she's had some uh, issues with her feet lately. So uh, pray for that. Uh, baby Crew, Baby Asher, uh, Baby Scarlet, the babies that we've been praying for. I saw some really neat video last night of, uh, of Baby Asher. Uh, Great grandparents sent it to me, and uh, it's exciting to see he's uh, he's moving around and and uh, crawling and excited. He, he seems super happy uh, where he's at. Uh, again, he's the one that we're praying for that will uh, continue to to gain weight. Uh, he has a feeding tube that they feed him several times a day, and uh, there's even some complications and issues with that as well. But uh, just continue to pray for him. Uh, pray for baby crew. Pray for baby Scarlet. Uh, Continue to pray for our uh, director of missions, Danny, and his wife, Beth, just as they transition over to a new position and, and just for uh, guidance and protection for them. Uh, pray for Steve Green, which is Joe's um, brother-in-law. has some um, serious medical complications going on, so we really want to lift uh, them up. Uh, also, Janet, his wife. Pray Donna, that procedure that uh, she had a few weeks ago, that that would uh, uh, truly be what uh, needs to be done for her for kind of release that pain that she's been experiencing, and, and so that would uh, provide quite a bit of relief for her, so we pray that that works. Um, Charles, uh, my nephew that we've been praying for, uh, they had the uh, PET scan yesterday, and it came back that he has cancer again where he had before. Uh, they think they're going to be able to do some more uh, chemo on him, and that will possibly take care of it. So we just pray uh, for uh, him and my uh, Charles and my niece Becky, and and just for uh, guidance and and protection as they go through this, and just for uh, God to really uh, lay His hands on him and provide healing for him. Uh, we pray for Cora, uh, just for recovery and the strength for her, uh, for her sister-in-law Donna, who has some serious health concerns as well. Uh, Greg's sister, Barbara, um, Jacob in the Marines, uh, just continue to pray for him, for uh, health, for strength, for uh, just the ability to do what uh, God has called him uh, to do. Um, he's in Japan. Um, he hasn't unspoken. We want to continue to pray for that. Uh, but just uh, the God would have used him right where he's at, uh, doing what he's doing, and that uh, uh, God would be blessed by the way. Um, Jake works and lives out his life for him. Uh, Pepper, Don, and Pat, just for health and, and strength for them. Also for Darlene, uh, for health. Uh, Tony and Michelle, for uh, not just health, she has some upcoming uh, tests here before too long, but uh, we'll have the services for her father this weekend and, and who had passed away recently, and so uh, want to be sure and lift uh, them up in prayer for comfort as well. 
Uh, Prepper Serve Day, June 25th. Again, I've, I've shared several times how exciting that is, and uh, the community in Eskridge is really looking forward to having uh, the uh, the Southern Baptists from Flint Hills come in for a work day that day. It's a way to show the hands and feet and, and the love of Christ in the, in the midst of uh, just a, a day of work and fellowship and uh, lots of things going on. So I hope you're able to attend and be a part of that. Uh, also for the Arkansas Mission Team coming in July, uh, that is really exciting. We met with uh, Tom and his wife uh, Sonia last week and Shelly and I did and so we're starting to get a, a visual of what's going to take place during that week and what's going on. And so it's super exciting uh, to see what uh, God already has in store, God is doing. And so, wow, to be a part of uh, what God is and what God is doing is going to be uh, super uh, this summer. So um, with those things, I'm sure we have some other prayers, but uh, uh, just continue to uh, add those on to our page. We'll add those to our list. And with that this evening, if you would join me in prayer, uh, we're going to uh, jump right in after that to the, to the Bible study. So, Lord, we thank you this evening uh, for just a, a chance to, uh, to come together. Uh, Lord, we've lifted up these prayers to you this evening, and, and we know that none of these things have, have caught you by surprise. Lord, you are fully aware of, of each and every life. Uh, sometimes, Lord, you use these things to draw us close to you. Uh, sometimes it's just uh, because of uh, where we are as, uh, as a people. And uh, uh, we, we see sickness and illness, and Lord, ultimately that was caused uh, by the fall in the garden. Uh, that is not your choice either. Uh, Lord, you do uh, provide healing, even today. Uh, sometimes that's not the way we would see or choose or uh, ask it to be. But Lord, in the midst of that, uh, you see the much bigger picture, and so we know that you're sovereign, and so, Lord, we come alongside you and, and pray that our hearts are um, connected to you uh, in the midst of what you're trying to do here. Uh, Lord, we, we lift those names up to you that were mentioned this evening. Uh, Lord, we ask for your guidance and direction in, in each one of those lives. Uh, Lord, we pray for um, protection. We pray for health. We pray for strength. We pray for, uh, Lord, just uh, blessings for those who have uh, treatments. Lord, I think about those uh, babies as well. Um, Lord, that you would continue to touch them and allow others to see that as well. Uh, Lord, we, we come in this evening uh, uh, headed into the, the time of Palm Sunday, the time we celebrate where Jesus rode into Jerusalem. And uh, Lord, it's just uh, uh, an amazing thing uh, what you've done for each one of us. And, and so I pray that uh, through Bible study this evening, through uh, these next couple weeks and the different activities that we uh, provide, Lord, that you allow us to really um, see how much you really love us. Uh, see, see what really took place and you went through um, so that we could have uh, freedom from sin and, and death and, and the grave. Lord, we thank you for that victory that comes through Jesus. And uh, Lord, we give you praise for that this evening. Uh, we thank you for the way you provide for each one of us, Lord. Uh, even on Sometimes so many things that we don't even see, uh, but yet you still have provided, and, and so we're excited about that. Uh, so Lord, this evening, as we open up your word, guide and direct us. Uh, help us to see you in the midst of this, and, and take something away this evening, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we're going to be starting here pretty quick in, uh, in the book of Hosea. Uh, so if you want to go ahead and turn your Bibles there, maybe you were... Uh, with us on Sunday. You might even have something stuck in that page. Uh, you kind of get the idea that usually the Sunday message is followed by the Wednesday Bible study. It's uh, not the same as different, but it's out of the same context. And so tonight we are in Hosea. We're beginning a new book. Again, as I mentioned, uh, if you don't have that and you would like that, uh, pick one up at the church. If you need one mailed to you, just make sure that Shelly and I know uh, what your address is. Books are free, um, shipment is free, we just want you to uh, be a part of it. Uh, again, you don't have to have a, a book to be a part of the Bible study. Um, uh, there are some other things in there, it goes in depth, and so there's a process uh, that you could even uh, grow even more through it, but uh, if, if you just want to come alongside us on Wednesday nights, uh, that would be super great as well. So, uh, we're coming into... Like I said, the season of Palm Sunday, I dressed up this evening. I have my Palm Sunday Hawaiian shirt just for you. 
um, thinking about Palm Sunday. Uh, a week from this Friday is like the darkest day in the world that we think of, uh, where the the day that Jesus went to the cross, and uh, for those that were there, all felt all was lost. And yet today here, now we call it uh, Good Friday because we know the outcome of what took place from that. Uh, but but God's plan to uh, redeem humanity, uh, it really centered on him with a people uh, that he would use to bless the world. And today he wants to do that through you and I. He wants to grow us in our first to find him through salvation, through faith in Jesus Christ. But as we do that, he wants to grow us into uh, a usable vessel that he can use in his world today. Uh, our salvation is not just so that we have a uh, a ticket out of hell, you know, a free uh, ride now to uh, eternity with God in heaven. But uh, he leaves us on this earth so that we have uh, work. He commissioned us now as uh, as a part of his ministry and mission. And so I really am encouraged by that and I hope you are as well. Um, he can bless the world through you. So one of the things I want you to start thinking about this evening is how can you be a blessing to others. And lots of times we think, oh, we can do it by, by giving this or baking something for them or, or, or uh, you know, this or that. Or But really, the closer we get in our relationship with the Lord enables us to be able to be a much greater blessing to those around us. Yeah, it's great to receive uh, a package of cookies or uh, a good deed. Maybe you uh, would clean up some leaves in somebody's yard or mow the grass for them or something. And, and that is effective and it is really good. But the greatest thing for you is to just grow in your relationship to the Lord so that you have even more to offer to them. And so that's one of the things we see uh, this evening. Um, as we get to this point of... Hosea, it was about 700 years now before Jesus would come. Uh, so we are uh, about, by the time we finish this book, we will be in the in the New Testament. Uh, but it was 700 years from Hosea to Christ. In about 300 years, they're going to not hear from God for 400 years. There was silence for 400 years until... That all those angels broke onto the scene. So we're back before that now. We're thinking about, this is the prophet, the prophet Hosea. Um, if you think back a little bit, you know, the people had had uh, had God as their king and lord and, and savior. And, and in the midst of that, all the other nations around them had kings. And, and boy, they just wanted to be like everybody else. They wanted to have a king and, and they wanted to be like other nations and and in reality, God knew that as they wanted another king, that meant that they were rejecting him as their king. So what they saw as good to get this king, he saw as not so good because he knew really what it meant for um, each one of those. Each one who would say that they wanted a king, but yet here they had him as their king. He gave his people what they asked for. He gave them a king. He gave them Saul, right? And Saul was, um, he looked apart, uh, but didn't live and enact it. Uh, he was more concerned with himself than he was with, uh, with God. David was then anointed. He was the next king. Uh, David uh, had issues of his own that we have uh, talked about there with uh, adultery and, and murder. And, and those were not in themselves the things. It was the result of, of where he was with his relationship with the Lord. He had just become comfortable. Uh, he wasn't moving forward with the Lord. He wasn't uh, seeking after him. And so after that, it really changed his life the way he way he did things. Uh, then we come along with Solomon. That was David's son, uh, the next king in line. And Solomon started out super strong. Uh, God asked him what he wanted. He told him he wanted wisdom. 
Uh, he allowed Solomon to not only have wisdom, but uh, wealth and prestige and power and strength and, and peace for the nation. And all these things were taking place, and yet Solomon did not finish strong. Uh, he had a very um, terrible ending uh, with all the wives that he had taken on. Uh, he began to worship all the pagan activities. Uh, because of that, God said that he would split the nation in two, and uh, not under Solomon's kingship, but it would be under uh, his son. And so that took place as well. Um, it doesn't matter which one of the kings that you look at, whether you start here or you go on through uh, all the list of the different kings or even the prophets. Um, there was never a king who could do everything right. Uh, each one of the kings, each one of the prophets were a foreshadow of Jesus to come. And so they were a part of what uh, Jesus, the culmination of all of those things uh, together. Uh, they were humans, just like you and I. They were humans with sin, and usually that sin uh, come out and shown uh, brightly in our pages. Again, after I said after Solomon was uh, king, then the Israel was torn in two. Um, the kings who would follow continue to lead the people of God down a spiral uh, trajectory of just. Uh, into evil and sin. Uh, eventually at that point, God promised um, judgment would come. But God never would abandon his people. Despite their unfaithfulness, despite what they did, uh, God still loves them, and he still loves you and I. So he doesn't love us because we do good and then not love us because we don't do good. God loves us because that is his nature, nature and that's his character. That's who, that's who God is. He created us. He knows what we're capable of if we would only uh, release that self to him and, and follow along the path that he would have us to go. Um, there, was a, there was a lot of prophets that went through as well that would come to deliver a word to the people, God would speak through the prophet. The prophet would come and say, okay, this is what needs to be fixed. Uh, you guys aren't doing this or this or this. And if they didn't do it, there was uh, judgment to come. If they did do it, uh, God would relinquish and allow them to have peace through that time. And so he, he continued to, the prophets would continue to urge them to repent. So, Think about yourself. Is there a time where God has been uh, pursuing you, uh, even if you were not pursuing him? Maybe you didn't even know of him. Maybe you didn't even welcome him into your life. But in the midst of that, he was pursuing you. There are times where we've seen provisions of God in the midst of it. Uh, he, he disciplines us. He, he guides us. He directs us. And so as I mentioned, Solomon, he was the uh, last king during this time to reign over the, the United Kingdom of Israel, uh, all the 12 tribes. Uh, under the son Rehoboam, the kingdom was torn in two. Uh, Israel to the north, Judah to the south. Both nations saw many kings come and go over the next 400 years. Uh, some of those kings uh, of Judah were faithful, uh, they were good leaders, uh, but that was pretty rare. Uh, during Hosea's time, his time spanned about 60 years, and during that time he saw several different kings come and go. And so the, the time of the divided kingdom with Israel and, and Judah, uh, it really wasn't marked by being faithful at all. It was, it was faithful, faithful less. Uh, the Israelites followed the examples of their kings, uh, they spiraled deeper and deeper and deeper into the worship of foreign gods, uh, Baal, uh, all the pagan different activities, and God continued to warn his people about idolatry. That judgment would come if they turned their back on their, on their relationship with him. And that's exactly what would happen there. Um... So even today, for each one of us, knowing 
Jesus is our true king should should move us into a a, a mission of or onto the mission of what God has in store for us. Okay, and so so his mission is one of redemption. Uh, that's how we got into a relationship with him. Uh, he redeemed us through the, the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And that's the mission that we have now to tell those around us. Um, the big thing that we should know is that God has a plan. Uh, his plan is right. And he wants us to be a part of that plan. Uh, that's kind of the exciting thing about this weekend. Uh, we celebrate the uh, Palm Sunday when Jesus uh, rode into Jerusalem. Uh, that was kind of the beginning of the end, you could say, but it was really the beginning of the beginning uh, for what it really is. But there before Israel and Judah were, were taken over by these foreign powers, the Lord would send those prophets in. And as he would send those prophets in, uh, they were to go and to tell the people. Tell the people about their sin, tell the people about uh, redemption uh, through the Lord, uh, tell the people about uh, what, what they're doing and the process of where they're at, and what difference it could be with a relationship with him. And so God's love is unfailing, and the prophet Hosea, we're going to see in just a minute, uh, he really was not called to just go and tell people about this message. Hosea was called to live out this message that God had given him. He was to live it out both in his life, visibly so others could see, and in his heart as well. And so we need to remember that most times these prophets, the message that come from God was a warning for the people. And at this time, this message for Hosea was that Hosea was to, to live out what God had said. Now, see, that really relates and reflects on us today. We should mirror that same type of image. We should live to live God's plan. Uh, he has a plan. His plan is right. And he wants to invite us to come join him in this mission, in this plan. And so these, these prophets then were uh, ones that bring judgment, but again, the Hosea is going to live it out. And so how can, how can warnings be a sign of, of love and devotion? It, it really is, a, it's a promise to bring us back. You know, we, we discipline our children so that they understand that there are rules and regulations even in life as they grow older. But the things that we discipline them with is to better them, not to harm them. And so that's what God's is about. And so Homer, uh, uh, Jose, I mean, is going to marry Gomer. Okay, and Gomer reminds us of the relationship God has with his people, you and I. He has it with Israel, and that's what this is about here, but it's really about you and I even today. And even though God's people are unfaithful, even though God's people love other things, even though God's people fall deep into idolatry, into things that uh, we cherish, we possess, we want more than our relationship with God, God still loves us. And it's because of his love that he sent Jesus into the world to die on the cross for our sins. And he did all that just to bring us back into the right relationship with him. Now as we think this evening, as we begin, do you, do you think it's kind of surprising that he would ask Hosea to, to do the things that he did? And we need to see that, that God is about restoration. God is about redemption, and God is about loving us, not dependent on what we do, or what we say, or how we act. And so Hosea's story here this evening is uh, vivid, 
it's an illustration of God's relationship with his people. And, and you know, we want to think, well, that was Israel back in Hosea's time. Well, that's, that's today with you and I as well. And so we're going to begin this evening in Hosea chapter 1. And we're going to read 2 through 9. Hosea 1, 2 through 9. I mentioned Sunday, if you have never read the book of Hosea, it's only about 14 chapters, not many pages. Uh, even after we finish up this evening, uh, I'd encourage you to to read through it. Uh, maybe if you haven't read through it in a long time, uh, you should read through it. Uh, see the difference that we think about this evening now that we talk about God's love for us that's lived out through Hosea and his wife, Gomer. All right, Hosea 1, 2 through 9. When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go take yourself an adulterous wife and children of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery and departing from the Lord. So he, which would be Hosea, married Gomer, daughter of Dibliam, and she conceived and bore him a son. Then the Lord said to Hosea, Call him Jezreel because I will soon punish the house of Jehu for the massacre at Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of Israel. In that day I will break down Israel's bow in the valley of Jezreel. Gomer conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. The Lord said to Hosea, Call her lo Rahama, for I will no longer show love to the house of Israel that I should show at all that I should show at all, forgive them. Yet I will show love to those in the house of Judah, and I will save them, not by bow, sword, or battle, but by, or by horses or horsemen, but by the Lord their God. After she had weaned lo Rahama, Gomer had another son. Then the Lord said, Call him lo am I? For you are not my people, and I am not your God. Boy, those things... You know, I shared Sunday as well. Uh, having some of those names really meant a lot of things. Uh, but unfortunately, those things were not really good. And to have a name like that would be almost depressing uh, in our days today. And so I want you to think this evening, how are you like Gomer in your relationship with God? You know, we, we unintentionally at times fall away from our relationship with the Lord because we place other things in place of where God is supposed to be. And those things can be good things, but when they become things that are in place of God, they're no longer good things. And so they start small and simple but the enemy uses those to build in our lives to take time away from our relationship with the Lord. And so it's so easy to live as if the consequences of sin don't apply to us because we think we're beyond that. That's what Solomon thought. This won't hurt. This won't matter. This won't be anything that will be bad. It won't get in the way of my relationship with the Lord. And so in essence, what does that really reveal about our nature and our relationship with the Lord? We're not where we're supposed to be. And if we're not careful, we won't be in that relationship at all because we're the ones who, who walk away or run away usually not run, it's usually just a veering off the path. It, it starts as a slow progression to get us away from where God really wants us to be. And so in this real life analogy, Hosea, the, the man, the good man, represented the Lord. Gomer, the unfaithful wife, represents Israel at that time, but also us today. We're, we are too just as unfaithful as they were. We love many things besides God. A lot of things get in the way of our relationship with the Lord. 
and how bad were God's people? Well, Hosea chapter 2 tells about their adultery, their shameful behavior of bearing children in promiscuity, and their pursuit of other lovers. And so we're going to move on to chapter 2, 16 to 23, Hosea 2, 16 to 23. And beginning at 16, it says, In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from their lips. No longer will the names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the fields and the birds of the air and the creatures that move along the ground, bow and sword and battle, I will abolish from the land so that all may lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in a righteous and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day I will respond, declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth. And the earth will respond to the grain and the new wine and the oil. And they will respond to Jezreel. And I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show her my love to the one I called, not my loved one. I will say to those, not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. It's interesting, in that description about God's love and for his people, he says he loves us even where we are. But he really doesn't want us to stay that way. And he loves us, but unfortunately it shows that we really don't love him because we love other things more than him. But in that day that we can place him first in our lives, then things can change. From the one he said, not my loved one, to my loved one, to not my people, to you are my people. And so it's about an intentional, purposeful relationship on our part as well. We need to watch who we are, what we say, where we go, what we do. And do we want or desire those things more than our relationship with the Lord? And with God, it shows us that, that love has no real boundaries. He loves us. And he loves us even while we don't demonstrate that back. Unfortunately for us, we love only those that love us. We love those things that make us happy, joyful, cheerful, excited. That's what we love. And, and if those things cease to do that for us, then we no longer love them anymore. We love something else. We change. And so as we age from uh, young to teen to middle age to older there are a lot of things in our lives that we love and place in front of the Lord, and those things change in time as we grow older. All along, God wants to be that one thing that's in first place. And so Hosea's love and commitment to his wife didn't depend on her faithfulness. Just as God's love doesn't depend on Yours or my faithfulness. God's love for his people is based on his own character. It's his own nature. Not on fuzzy warm feelings or things that make us feel good. And so if you move on over to chapter 3 in Hosea. Chapter 3 verses 1 through 5. The Lord said to me, go show 
love to your wife again, though she is loved by another, it is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for fifteen shekels of silver and about a homer and a lecteth of barley. Then I told her, You are to live with me many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man, and I will live with you. For the Israelites will live many days without a king or a prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without an ephod or an idol. Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. It's interesting. Hosea's actions. He was to keep loving Gomer even though she, he knew she was unfaithful. That's, that's a picture of, of God's love for us. God loves us no matter what we've done, but again, he doesn't want us to stay where we are. He wants us to come closer in that relationship with him to lay those idols, those things down that get in the way. And, and sometimes it's not uh, a material position. Sometimes it's an attitude of the heart, right? We can have pride or prejudice. There can be material things that are in the way, or we can be working toward those things. The Gomer had, had left Hosea. She forsook his love and, and sought the love of another. But that was not to stop Hosea. He found her. He, sit, or he sought for her. He looked for her, and he found her. And he found her as a slave. And even though she was his wife, he, he paid the price for her redemption. And he brought her back to his home as his wife. He didn't choose to purchase her and then keep her as a slave. He chose to purchase her, paid the price so that she could go back and be his wife. And so that's a vivid picture of the gospel. We, we are all slaves to sin. God sought us out. See, God is a pursuing God. And that's his nature and character as well. So he, he sought us out. He paid the price of our sin by the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And then he brings us back into this relationship, not so we can be slave to that sin. That's why I said we need to look at those things and put those things aside. He doesn't buy us so that we can continue to be slaves to sin. He buys us so that we can be free and in a right relationship with him. And so this evening, I want you to think about the scriptures that we read, the, the things that we talked about, and, and I want you to write down at least one way that you can apply these truths this evening, that you would be a sinner saved by God's pursuing faithful love. He paid the price, and now he offers grace. What, what can you do with that? How can that change your life this week? How can it make a difference in who you are and how you relate to others? And, and see, that's what I said. That's what God wants. He, he wants us to not just have this freedom that we have, but then he wants us to grow in our relationship so that we're able to share about that freedom with others. So like Gomer, we have been bought out by the blood of Jesus Christ out of our sinful nature and our sinful ways. And that's why the Apostle Paul continues to say, why should we live like that anymore? We're free from those things through Jesus' blood so that we can share with others how he freed us from those very things. He wants us to be free 
And then he wants us to share about that freedom with others. It's interesting, I always think, you know, and I am thankful for the country that we live in and the freedoms that we have here, but we're always really bold to stand up for the freedoms that we have in our country, and yet we never share about the freedoms that we have through our relationship with the Lord. And how much more important is that? And so he has, he has freed us from sin, he's freed us from death, he's freed us from the grave. And like Gomer, note on what sin you were living in when he, he freed you from that. And so we're not supposed to dwell in it, live in it, stay in it. We're supposed to be free from it so that we can share with others how God delivered us from that so that they too can be delivered as well. And that's the gospel. That's, that's, what, that's what he rode into Jerusalem for. It's not about continuing to live in it. That's not being free. That's just continuing to be a bondage to the slaves of sin. And Jesus didn't give his life so that we would be bound up to that sin forever. And he broke the chains. So in the Bible speaking about prophets, he's talking about God's mouthpiece at the time. They were the ones that stood before the people and said, Thus says the Lord, right? Not everybody liked the prophets because they told them about sin and shame and the way they were living was wrong and the one they needed to do was to repent and turn to the Lord. And so if they didn't do that, then judgment would be upon them. And not everybody wants and likes to hear that. And so in the case of Hosea, it wasn't about going and telling this message. It was about living that message. It was about others seeing how he bought and paid for and redeemed his promiscuous wife from the bondage of sin. He used to be a walking, living, breathing message. Not just some verbal mouthpiece, but his life was supposed to be the style of the way that people would see. His marriage would require him to marry an unfaithful woman. And under no pretense about, God didn't mix words when he said who he was to marry and what he was supposed to do. And so Hosea knew from the very beginning that this marriage was going to be hard. It was going to be filled with heartache. It was going to be filled with infidelity because of Gomer's lifestyle. But God expected faithfulness, and he expects faithfulness from us today. And so the prophet wasn't just to go out and prophesy against marital unfaithfulness. Hosea was to pursue, he was to marry, he was to embrace a wife of a promiscuous lifestyle. He knew her history, he knew what her future would be, and yet he was called to love her, and not only love her, but love her unconditionally, and then go and buy her back once that she ended up as a slave. Man, that's a... That's a that's an amazing call, but that's what he also calls us to do today. When we look at that passage, we see a difference in the way children would come into this marriage. It says their first son. She conceived and bore him a son. But if you look down in verses 6 and 8, it really doesn't say that those were... Hosea's children. They might have been, but we don't know that. They could have been sons of other men. Those times it says that she conceived and gave birth. And so that shift in language suggests that the, the first child was Hosea's, but the second and third was really probably because of Gomer's ongoing unfaithfulness. 
And here we start to see God's command. Not only are you to love and honor and redeem and cherish Gomer, but you're supposed to love and raise these children just as if they were yours. And so he would he would marry an unfaithful woman and be reminded about that for years because of the children that, that they would bear together. And so a couple of those children were probably illegitimate children. And so why did Hosea then have to marry Gomer? When God designed marriage, he instituted a relationship of, of intimacy and sacrifice and love. And so Hosea was to serve as that, I said earlier, the, the walking, talking, living, breathing illustration of that relationship because it's really about a relationship between Christ and the church. That's, that's Jesus and you and I. We're, we're Gomer. We're unfaithful. We place all these things in front of him. Even when he, he loves us and, and buys us out of redemption, we still turn around and, and place things in front of him. And so Hosea's life, it illustrates how, how painful that relationship is. You know, we're going we're gonna to go into Good Friday here soon and think about Jesus being on the cross and that he, he paid the price for our sins on that cross. And yet for some, they still live in the sin that he paid the price for. It, it's unfortunate. Saying something is not living it. And so that's what he told Hosea. It's not about you saying and telling people. It's about you living it. It's a lot different to live a relationship with the Lord than it is to say I have one. Right? Amen? It's easy to say, oh, I have a relationship with the Lord. I'm a Christian. Am I living like I have a relationship with the Lord? Am I living like he paid the price for the redemption of my sin, that I was a slave to sin, and that I'm living free now? It's not supposed to be about us. It's supposed to be about him. I think about Hosea. The, one of the most difficult things for Hosea in that whole marriage was probably, as he looked at her and those children every day, people talked about him but he didn't care because that was the message that God had give him that's what he was supposed to do man just think if Jesus on the way to the cross saw how you and I were going to live and said I ain't, I ain't going through with this look how unfaithful they are Look how unfaithful they'll be, even if I die on the cross and my blood is shed and, and, and they think I'm dead and they put me in a tomb and then they roll a stone in front of it and then, and, and then we're going to burst forth from that because that thing isn't going to hold me. But they're still going to be unfaithful and so he, he did that no matter what. But he wants us to be faithful, but he's not going to force us to be faithful. Hosea's life experience then influenced the way that he spoke about the Lord. It's easy to say one thing if you've never had to live it, right? I drive by that gym downtown dozens of times a week. I can see people in there working out. I know my daughters go down there and work out. It doesn't do me. I've even got a membership. But it doesn't do me a bit of good, does it? I can't say, whoo, that was a hard workout today. I can, but I'm not living it. And until I walk through those doors and I put in the effort, then I'm not living it. 
And so there's got to come a time in our lives where we just stop talking about being a Christian and we actually start to live like that's who we are. You know what? I, I really am a Christian. I was a sinner and, and Jesus died for me. And even though he knew how unfaithful I would be, he shed his blood so that I could be free and I could be free from those things instead of being held up in bondage all the time. And so if Hosea showed this kind of love and faithfulness to his wife, knowing her pattern of unfaithfulness, then how much does God really love you and me? He pursues us relentlessly. Time and time again, and unfortunately so many times in our lives we get to that point where we've got a really good relationship with the Lord, and then before long we've veered off the path, and, and and sometimes we just run away like Jonah. And sometimes it's just a slow progression. But the picture of love that God stands is, it, it, it surpasses all love that we think about or call love in this culture that we live today. I said Sunday, you know, we throw that word love around, it's amazing. I love the weather today. I love fried chicken, right? I love ice cream. I love my dog. And so how many times have we said that, and yet we don't live that, and that's not even really the word that we're talking about here this evening. Right? We love sports. Besides that, if you, you know, I love KU, right? And lo and behold, they're, they're the national champions. But in the grand scheme of things, that's not going to make a whole lot of difference. Food, games, uh, there's all kinds of things we can throw in the midst of that. But before long, we quickly fall in love with something else. I mean, if you're watching the March Madness and your team gets beat out in like the first round... You pick up somebody else, and all of a sudden, you love another team, right? Oh, then they lose, so what do you do? Oh, I pick up another team. So by the time you get to the end, one of those two teams is going to be your team. Yeah, great, right? No, it, 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 but that's the way we live our lives. God is showing us a, a different type of love. And it's a definition not just by verbal expressing, but it's by a lifestyle expressing. He used it through Hosea, and he wants to use it through you and I. 1 John 4.10 says, Love consists of this. 1 John 4.10. Sorry if you didn't get that written down. You need to. Love consists of this. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Romans 5, 8 said that God demonstrates his love and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died some 2,000 years ago knowing that we would still sin today. So what are we going to do with the information that we, that we have? What are we going to do with those things? We need to utilize that in our lives today. We need to start living the life of a Christian, living the life of one who has a personal relationship with the Lord. And here's the thing, to, do, to, to live like that, we have to have it. And so that, that's my prayer for you. And I, and I really encourage you to continue praying that for me, that, that that would be something that I would continue to have, that I that I don't veer off the path, but I stay in that relationship with the Lord. And, and that's what I'm praying for you, that you don't veer off the path, but you stay in that relationship. We're going to close out this evening. Uh, I'd like to go with you. I'll give you an opportunity to... To share in the ministries at at, uh, at North, and, and you can do that through uh, Lifeway with Generosity. You can download an app on your phone, your tablet, or your PC, and you can give through that. You can mail a check to the church. You can um, 
come in person and drop it in. And, and, and I've said, if, if you don't get our newsletter, you can get my part of the newsletter on the webpage. But if you don't get the, the whole newsletter and you would like to see that, uh, we're, we're starting to highlight those different ministries that, that we uh, give to and are a part of. Uh, just let Shelly or I know. Uh, you don't have to put your email on the Facebook page here this evening, but uh, if you don't get it and you want it, we can email that newsletter to you. Uh, you can see it. You can see what's going on uh, in, in a wider, vast picture at North than just what you see on Sunday mornings or Wednesday evenings as we invite you to the table. So there's so much more uh, that goes on, and it's within that newsletter. And so we'd love to uh, give that out to you if you'd like it. Uh, uh, Instant message, direct message, text, email, whatever it is, uh, get in contact with us and we'd love to send it to you uh, so you can be a part of that. And, and then the next, several, the newsletters come out uh, by monthly every, every two months. And so over the next several uh, newsletters, we'll uh, expand on some of the different uh, ministries uh, that we're a part of, the, the way uh, the money is spent, where it goes. and exciting things that are taking place at, at North and, and through the Lighthouse and through the food pantries and oh my gosh, God is just is just working in such a mighty way that it's exciting to be a part of, of who he is and where he's at and I'm so excited that you're a part of it as well. And so we love you guys. Uh, again, if you need something before, uh, be sure and let us know. Uh, we'd love to be a help. We want to be a part of the family. We shared uh, many, many, many uh, Wednesday nights ago that our our realm of, of, of church is way different than it's ever been before. And so no matter where you live, uh, we really want you to be a part of the body at North uh, because our body has expanded far beyond the walls. And so that is exciting uh, to see what God is, is doing. And so anyway, we love you guys. Hope you have a great evening. If you need something before we see you on Sunday, uh, be sure to let us know. And with that, I have to say, good night.